everyone, welcome to Ask an Armorer. My name's Kia and today I'm going to be taking you through my process of how I've put together a layout plan for a fencing tournament. This one is going to be for the upcoming Canada Cup, which is happening in about a month and a half as of recording, and I'm going to be using Excel as my program of choice for this. So the first thing I'm going to do when I start planning a layout is I'm going to take a close look at whatever um, documentation I'm provided about the uh, venue. So luckily the venue has provided me with this detailed layout plan of the space we're using. That is going to be this uh, large gym here. So I'm going to take a quick look at this and see what it is that I need to know before I start laying things out. So the first thing that I'm going to see is my dimensions. So here we have 166 feet and 2 inches by 173 feet and 9 inches. So I'm going to have to convert this to meters later on just because that's going to make my life a lot easier when I'm planning out the placement of the piece and everything, but excellent to have the dimensions so clearly marked like this. I'm also going to take a look at the fact that we have this little bump out here that is unfortunately not marked with dimensions, but I can kind of estimate this later. I'll go into that in more detail in a bit. Uh, I also see that our entry port is going to be over here. So these are where the garage doors are. I will assume based on that and their dimensions, uh, either over here or over here is where we will be bringing equipment in so that's less to do with the layout and more just how I'm going to start the flow of laying things out later on, but good to know just for ourselves at this point. And then the final thing for layouts is in here. So this is the main entrance where fencers, referees, coaches, parents, everyone else is going to be coming in. So I need to make sure that this area here, at least, is pretty clear so that people aren't walking straight into a referee's path if they're trying to do their jobs here or onto the back of a piece or something like that. Uh, the final thing I'm going to note is that these little squares here, they're a little hard to tell what they are, but I was informed by the venue manager that these are columns and they're about eight inches to a foot in diameter. So I'm going to need to make sure that I make note of these. Again, they're not particularly marked in terms of dimension, but we can estimate. So let's get into that one. So based on this, we see that they are, they do look like they're pretty evenly spaced at three across and then two down. So when I am translating this into Excel, I'm going to take this dimension here, and I'm just going to divide it into four so that I know where these are going to go. And same thing, I'm going to take this one and divide it by three so that I know exactly how far apart all of these need to be. And then finally for this one, again, we don't have actual dimensions, but we can kind of estimate that it's about halfway in either dimension to this post here. Um, so that's the assumption I'm going to make. So whatever number I get for this one here, I'm going to have both again and mark out this one. Um, again, because this is just an estimate, there will have to be some adjustment on the day we actually do set up, but that's the reality of any tournament. There's always going to be something unexpected or changed or unknown. So we have to be a little bit flexible, but at least I can start with as good an estimate as I can make so that we at least have an approximate layout that is pretty good. So I have here my open Excel document. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight the entire thing. If you're new to Excel, you can do so just by clicking this little half triangle in the top corner. And I am going to bring everything down so that my boxes are 20 pixels by 20 pixels. Sometimes this takes a little bit to get it set right. If you have an easier way of doing this, let me know in the comments, because right now I just kind of 
try to gently move my mouse around until it actually hits that button. Now, it doesn't have to be 20 pixels necessarily each direction. You just want to make sure that each of these boxes are completely square so that you know that the dimensions are going to equal on either side. Uh, so depending on what your preference is, I just like going with 20 pixels. I will also then go down a few boxes down from the edge. I don't like working right at the edge just in case I want to make edits on the outside of the box, but here we are. So as you'll recall from our layout, it is a 173 by 166 feet. So that translates to about 53 by 50 meters. Uh, I do tend to round down just to make sure that, um, frankly, it makes it easier and we're not overestimating the amount of space we have. It's always easier to work with surprise extra space than scrambling if we overestimated how much space we have. So I'm going to start and I'm just going to make one large outline of that. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and head across. And the nice thing is up here, I don't actually have to count this little thing here. This 11 here will highlight the size of it for me. So I'm going to head across until this is 120 or 106 wide because that is, so you see now it is shifted to over here to be it. So 106 wide, and then we're going to go 100 down. And once I have this box, I'm going to come up here to my borders tool, and I'm going to make thick outside borders. This just means if I zoom out a little bit, this is now our entire you know, new layout here. And the reason that I am doing 106 by 100 is that I take that 50 meters by 53 meters and I double that. So basically each box is now half a meter by half a meter. This just gets me a lot more flexibility in terms of laying things out because I can move it around a little bit more easily. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in those columns and that extra space. So across the top here, we needed to break it down into four sections. So we're going to break this up into 26 boxes. So we're going to come over here. So I have my 26 here. And just to make a note for myself, I'm going to say right border, and that now just makes this little tiny tick right here, which means everything down here is where that pillar is going to be. Now we're just going to continue to do the same thing. So you see now here, this final box is actually 28, or I guess 14 meters, 28 half meter boxes wide. So I'm going to undo these two, and I'm going to make these two 27, because again, this is not perfectly divisible, but we're going to guesstimate. So let's make tab and tab. So now this little area is going to be 14 and a half meters wide, while this one will also be 14 and a half meters wide. And then this final one should go back to being 26. Perfect. So now I have a rough guesstimate of where each of these columns is going to be. And now we need to figure out how far down they are. This one, since this is 100, we need to divide it by 3. So that will be one, two sections of 33 boxes and one section of 34. Again, making sure that we are keeping it as even as possible while recognizing with the limited tools I have, I cannot do too much breakdown in terms of partial fractions. So we're just going to scroll down here. So this first one, again, we are at 33, and I'm going to give myself a little bottom tick, and then another 34 box down here. And finally, last box, just to double check, is 33. All right, so now we need to actually put in our column. So I'm going to highlight this entire row here. So 
So this tells me that this is the entire row, and then I'm just going to come down this one here. So you can see I'm basically just looking, I'm finding where my shadow is here and here to make sure that I am on either side of the little tick. And I'm just going to make myself a little thick outside box lines. And this is my first column. So as you can see, we are straddling each of our little tick marks. And again, this is now a full meter on either side. So even though this may not be a completely accurate measurement of where the columns are, the fact is the columns are going to be much, much smaller than this, so they should fall within this range and we'll just have more space on any given side of it. So now I can actually just copy this so, and we're just going to scroll on over. I could stay in this same row knowing where it is. And now, as you can again see up here, I am lined up with this side of the tick and I can just hit Control V, copy paste it and move along again to create my last one. So now that's this row here. So I can actually copy all three of these and scroll down until we hit this second row here. Again, our tick is right there. And now we have a perfect replica of all of our columns. So this should now be as best a guesstimate as I can make based on the limited information I have about where these pillars are. So the final task is that little bump out room that we have here. So I am going to go about halfway from the edge here. So this was a 27 box wide, so we're going to go 14. And then this was a 33 box wide, so we're gonna go 17. And once again, we're just going to highlight this in thick out borders. I always use the thick outer borders for things that are uh, unmovable so that I know exactly, so I can tell the difference between things that I can play around with and things that I can't. So given that these are the walls and columns, I, I can't move these. I can't ask them to be shifted somewhere else. Uh, so I just want to make sure that it's clear to me that they can't go anywhere. So that is my basic layout. And then the final thing I'm going to do just before we get into planning things is I'm going to make myself some template um, piece layouts. So a piece is one and a half to two meters wide by 18 meters long, including full runoff. So I'm going to make myself, again, using our handy dandy uh, rule at the top here, I'm going to highlight a 36 by four square. And because again, this is movable, I'm going to do it with thin borders. It's a little hard to tell, but there is a difference here. So there is one vertical piece. So again, this may be slightly larger. Some pieces are, when they're fully created, are only one and a half by 17 or even 16 meters long. Again, this is me being cautious of size and any additional size based in here will just be given back to the referee or to making sure that the scoring machine is a safe distance away from the fences. So now I'm going, so this is just one which we are going to make our lives a little bit easier later on. And I'm actually going to make pairs of these. Most of the time, a uh, piece will come in pairs. There'll be two piece with the two scoring machines in the middle. So, that, so I'm going to create just a little section of those. So I just copied that and pasted it in. So that I've got both of those. And finally, I'm just going to add in where the scoring machines will go. We go down half the length of this, which would be 18. And then put my cursor on that end box there. And once again, just make me a little box in there. 
So this is just a one meter placement table. Obviously, sometimes these are actually going to be a six foot table, but that's not really necessary to mark out here. All we need to know is that we have this table that we are going to assume is about a meter wide with about half a meter of space between it and the piece so that when a fencer is fencing, hopefully they won't hit it and damage the machinery. So now I have my base um, vertical piece. Now I'm just going to do the same thing except horizontal. So I can just grab these and paste them in where I want rather than having to create them individually. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that really quick. And now here we have my two templates of a vertical pair of pieces and a, oh sorry, a vertical pair of pieces and a horizontal pair of pieces. So here is what I'm going to use as my very base template for the layout. And because I'm not sure what layout I'm gonna go with now, I am going to actually copy this entire page so that I have a few different versions of it that are just blank slates so that I can play around with a few different layouts and see what works the best. All right, so now I have three of the exact same sheet. I'm just gonna save that uh, just in case anything crashes on me. And now I'm gonna start trying to play with this layout. <clears throat> Now, in an ideal world, I would be able to create some nice pods of four of these. Uh, basically, that would be, if I had this here, there would be another pair just down here. And those are a really nice layout because it's easy. You can just send fencers from an event, say, Senior Women's Foil, say all fencers go to pod A, and they know that it's this grouping of four, and then the referees can just manage it within there. However, I am not entirely certain that's going to work within this given we have these pillars in the way. So I'm gonna just try it, see what I can come up with. But again, I recognize that there's limitations to the space. And again, keep in mind, we cannot put anything over here given that this is where the doors are. Please note, for this tournament, we need 20 pieces, so that is what I'm going to be aiming to put in here. So let's just start with this and see what happens. So basically, I'm not going to put anything here and just put everything else starting over here. So I'm going to go about two meters away from the wall on the end here, and then two meters away from the wall on the other side, which is the absolute minimum space you can give to a referee. So, all right, we have a bit more space over here for uh, between here and the pillar. So I'm just going to actually shift this over a little bit. Let's see what we've got. All right, so we have three meters on this side now. And let's see over here we have about seven meters. So again, recognizing that this pillar is going to be much smaller than this. You know, I can probably shift this out one another half a meter this way if I wanted, but I'm going to leave this here for now. So there's there's one. We'll see how many more we can fit into here. So again, giving about two meters of space between the ends for people to walk through and everything, I'm going to shift this down here. So now we've got this nice pod of four. So here we've placed it, it's exactly in line up here with this one. So I didn't get it quite in the middle here. There's only about two meters here. And let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so we're gonna shift this over three more. I'm just gonna come down and double check this spacing. So that's a full four meters on that side and only two and a half on this. So I overshot a little bit. Let's move this back. All right, so now it is seven on this side and six on this. We're not gonna get it exact, but there's another one there. So we're just gonna keep going and we're gonna put another one right here.
All right, so now this is about as much as we can get in with this particular layout on the vertical. So we are only at 12 pieces right now. So very far away from that 20 number that we're aiming for, but you know, let's see what we can get across the bottom here. So this is not a great layout because you can see here, if I give enough space for a referee on this side, they're going to be dangerously close to the ends here and there's not gonna be a whole lot of space here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just scrap this layout because this is clearly not giving us what we need. So good shot, but this start at vertical like this, not really what we're going for. So this is why we have multiple layouts because now we've got a fresh clean sheet and I'm gonna start with a horizontal layout to see what that does for us. So again, I'm gonna start here and I'm going to actually put this right up against this one here. Uh, as you may have noticed from this one here, if I put a second horizontal set here, there is gonna be space on the side. So I'm thinking I'm going to try and get two columns of horizontal ones with maybe an extra one on the side except inverted again because we want to keep this space free. So I'm going to start closer to this one here. This may take a little bit of fussing as I don't have the exact dimensions now. I'm just going to kind of guess to get this in place. So again, give that at least the two meters off the wall. All right, not bad for a first go at it. You can see I've got a few about a meter and a half at this end here, which is fine. And then we're going to do the same thing. Come on over here and paste it here. Oh, look at me go with the estimated. So now there's two full meters in between here. We've got two meters on the top here. So the interesting part is I don't think this part here is going to be large enough to fit a full another one with referee space adequately but we may be able to sort of straddle this and make it so that this area here where the scoring machine would go will actually go, like the scoring machine will go in the same line as the uh, pillars and then we can use that space in there. So we're gonna give that one a shot. So for that one, we do actually need to just take one of these and work our way down to it. So you know one. There we go. So here, let's see what this space is. Like. One, two. All right, so that's a full five and a half meters, which is excellent amount of spacing for our referees. And I can actually, in that case, probably move these ones down and give these referees by the wall a bit more space here. But let's keep playing with this and see if this turns out to work out. So we could also take this, and again, our scoring machines can go right here. It's a little hard to tell the difference, but again, Scoring machine box is the one with the thin outline, and the thick outline is the pillar. So you know what? We're just going to do a quick fill in the pillar completely so that those are clearly defined. Great. Okay, so now anything that's super solid black is a pillar. We cannot move it these boxes here are the tables we can move those so that's now fine all right so we've got lots of space over here now so i'm going to see if i can't just put in one of these just right down here so we're actually going to take this entire set of four here and if i come down here we want to go gives them a good four full meters here. So let's do that. So how long, what does this give us? So did I get that estimate correct? Excellent. That's a little bit more actually. So that's nice. So that's three meters on this side for the referees um, from this pillar. And then this is a full four and a half meters between these ones here for them. So again, I could probably shift this very slightly in either direction, but right now that looks pretty okay.
So now we've got one more that we're going to plop down at the base here. Again, we're going to come down, make sure we've got lots of room for these pillars, lots of room over here. And now we've got one, two, three, four. So we have 16 pieces here. So it doesn't look like I will have enough space to put in a full another two, set of two here, but what we can do is see if we can do this. So we can just grab half of this piece or half of this pod here. And try this. Yeah, so that works out nicely. Let's see here. That's a little tight. That is only six or uh, three meters between here for two referees. But we can push this a little bit more. So unfortunately, you see that my line now here has disappeared, but that's fine. We know it's supposed to be there. That opens this up a little bit. And given that the referees here have three meters and there's only one of them, I might just shift these guys a little bit closer here. Just because there are, will again, there will be two referees in here that are trying to walk past each other, but here with the pillars, it's less likely that these referees are going to run into each other. Plus, they do have a lot more space overall that they can walk around the pillars and still see each other. Great. So now we've increased this to 18. And now we're just going to try for that other 20. And that's where this space all along here goes. So I'm going to try that same trick of a half pod, or I suppose this is a quarter pod now with just one piece and one scoring table. So we're going to come up here, line this up here just because that will look nicer. And let's see here, this is not super ideal with where it's placed, just given it's three meters here, three meters there, but it might be what we have to do just for the sake of space. And then once more, we'll just come down again here and place one more here. And there we go. So now we have a layout with 20 pieces all settled in. So what I can do is shift all of these ones slightly this way. Again, we have a bit of space here that we can take up and I do want to make sure that there is ample space between these for the referees. If we want and if you want to make this more symmetrical you can push this one down a bit further but that would be purely aesthetic uh, as much as anything else and I'm not sure we need it. We might just say that this is a corner that people can put their bags in and that will be that. So let's just shift everything slightly here. All right, so as a final check, I'm going to see how much space I have on this side here. So that's 15 blocks, which is seven and a half meters. So that's great. Again, the entrance is going to be somewhere in here. I didn't bother marking it because it's not super necessary so long as we've got this space, but that is plenty of space here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to roughly block out a section, let's say here. And we can call this the DT. So we'll just give them a nice box here. And I will write in here DT. So that's fine. They've got their space there. We can come over here. And we can put medical, say, down in this corner over here. So if you recall our original layout, we had the entrance and the hallway here, and then we had a bit of space here. So given the spacing issues in here, we do actually have additional storage space for bags. So people are going to come in and put their bags sort of here, here, and in this corner here. So the armory and the vendor are going to be out in the hallway here. So let's just write medical. But we do need medical and the DT to be inside the hall with the fencers. 
DT, obviously, so that they can accurately see the flow of the tournament and determine where and when everything is going to be assigned, and medical so that they can quickly respond to any medical emergencies, although we, of course, hope that in every situation we don't actually have medical emergencies and that everyone remains healthy and uninjured throughout this tournament. So there we go. This is what I will now submit to the tournament organizers just to make sure that I have everything that we need and that I haven't missed anything. I will probably go through off camera just to clean these up a little bit. For example, I will go through and just merge all of these cells so that it appears as one nice single area rather than a set of blocks as well as merging all of these and increasing the size of the font so it's really obvious what both of these are. But again, that's an aesthetic decision that I just do to make things a little bit more legible um, and isn't entirely necessary to get the point across. But just an example, so here's this one, and then I typically just put it nicely in the middle here and increase the size a little bit, just so it's nice and easy to read. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you found this video interesting and useful insight into the behind the scenes work that goes into planning a tournament. If you have any questions, comments, or other things you'd like me to cover, let me know down below. See you in the next one. Bye.